ओके इन आर वीडियो सीरीज ऑफ ई सी जी इंटरप्रिटेशन मेड इजी बाई सिक्स स्टेप मैथड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट स्टेप फाइव ऑफ ई सी जी इंटरप्रिटेशन इन विच वी विल असेस द हाइपोट्रफी नाउ द प्रीवियस फोर स्टेप्स वर जनरल इंप्रेशन कैलिब्रेशन रिदम इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड क्यू आर एस डिटर्मिनेशन नाउ वी आर ऑन द फिफ्थ स्टेप नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल डिटर्मिन द एट्रियल हाइपोट्रॉफी in the atrial hypertrophy coming to right atrial hypertrophy how do you see right atrial hypertrophy on ecg now whenever there is atrial enlargement you will see changes in the p wave because whenever atria contract it results in p wave on ecg so whenever there is abnormal changes in the uh, atria it will result in change in the shape of p wave whenever there is right atrial enlargement it appears as p pulmonale people menele might be present in lead 1 and or lead 2 and or lead 3 now people menele might be present in either one of these leads or it may be present in more than one leads people menele is a p wave which is peaked since there is atrial enlargement there is more voltage and you will see peaking of the p wave this is how people menele appears on ecg this is tall p wave with a pointed end now this part of the p wave shows the right atrium and this part shows the left atrium now whenever there is right atrial enlargement it will result in a high voltage and that will result in a tall p wave but whenever this right atrial is atria is depolarizing it will result in a tall p wave but when the current goes to the left atrium the left atrium is not enlarged the left atrium is not having that much tissue that much enlargement therefore left atrium will not be able to maintain the voltage and the voltage will suddenly drop that will result in the peaking of the p wave that is the classical p pulmonale seen in right atrial enlargement Now, if you look at this ECG, in this ECG, you will be able to appreciate the peaking of the P wave. This is the P wave. This is followed by a QRS complex, and look at the tall P waves. Look at the tall peaked P waves that have pointed ends. That is a classical feature of right atrial enlargement that is called as P pulmonale. This is another ECG with a closer look. Look at the tall P waves. Look at the tall P waves followed by QRS complexes. now on lead 1 2 3 you will be able to appreciate the p pulmonale the tall p waves peaked p waves but in lead v1 specifically lead v1 you will see a different morphology in the different morphology you will be able to appreciate a biphasic p wave in the biphasic p wave there will be a huge positive deflection and after that positive deflection there will be a negative deflection now this huge positive deflection occurs due to the depolarization of the right atria because the right atrium is enlarged there is a huge positive deflection and the negative deflection will be small because that shows the left atrial depolarization and the left atria is small this is an ecg showing the biphasic p wave the biphasic p wave the huge positive deflection shows the right atrium and the small negative deflection shows the left atrium that is the biphasic wave and that is specifically seen in v1 now coming to some causes of right atrial enlargement remember whenever there are changes in the right side of the heart most likely the causes are in the lungs copd pulmonary embolism anything that is destroying the lung interstitial lung disease now in that case the right heart has to pump blood to the lungs therefore when there is problem in the lungs there will be problem on the right side of the heart in the right atrial enlargement the cause includes copd pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension asd atrial septal defect tricuspid or pulmonary valve diseases whenever there is pulmonary valve stenosis the right atrium has to push put more pressure to push the blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle therefore there will be changes in the right atrium that is the, the causes are very easy right atrial enlargement causes are the lungs and the valvular conditions mainly so that was all about right atrial enlargement now we'll be discussing about left atrial enlargement in the left atrial enlargement since it's an if it's a atrial enlargement there will be changes in the p wave because p wave shows the atrial contraction in the lead 1 and or lead 2 and or lead 3 you will see p mitrelle that is the classical p wave for left atrial enlargement in p mitrelle what you will see is that you will see a double humped p wave 
in lead 1, 2, 3, you might be able to find double humped P waves in which the first hump shows the right atrial depolarization and the second hump shows the left atrial depolarization. Now, that is a classical feature of left atrial enlargement. Now, the features of P mitrale are that the total P wave duration will be greater than or equal to 0.12 seconds. 0.12 seconds is equal to 3 small boxes. So, the P wave will be 3 small boxes wide or more than 3 small boxes wide. It will be notched or a humped P wave. There will be space between the two humps and that is equal to or greater than 0 0.041 small box. Now, this is an ECG showing P mitrale. Look at the double humps of the P wave. Look at the double humps of the P wave and look at the size. This is one, two, three, three small boxes wide. So, that is a wide P mitrale with a notched or a humped P wave. That is a classical presentation of left atrial enlargement on ECG. So, the ECG shows so many things. Now, in this video series, we have been discussing so many things. Each and every pathology can, be, can cause change in the electrical currents. And if you master the ECG, there are many things that you can easily catch on ECG. Now, the P mitrale is seen in lead 1, 2 or 3. There are some changes that are different from lead 1, 2, 3 that are seen in lead V1. In lead V1, what you will see is that you will see a biphasic P wave. Now, it's just the same as right atrial enlargement. In the right atrial enlargement, V1 also showed the biphasic P wave. But the difference is that in the right atrial enlargement, the first positive deflection was huge and the negative deflection was small. But in the left atrial enlargement, the positive deflection is small and the negative deflection is huge. The positive deflection shows right atrial depolarization. The negative deflection shows left atrial depolarization and the negative deflection is huge because there is left atrial enlargement. There is the difference between the ECG manifestation of the biphasic P wave in lead V1 in right and left atrial enlargement. It, there is a biphasic P wave seen in lead V1. This is an ECG. In this ECG, if you look, this is a biphasic P wave with a positive deflection as well as a negative deflection. A positive deflection as well as a negative deflection. And the negative deflection is bigger than the positive deflection. That negative deflection is huge because there is left atrial enlargement. If the a positive deflection is huge that indicates that there is right atrial enlargement. If the negative deflection is huge that shows that the left atrial enlargement is there. Now coming to the causes of left atrial enlargement. In the causes of left atrial enlargement the causes are related to the afterload. Like in hypertension, in hypertension there is increased afterload, there is high blood pressure. The atria has to contract more to push the blood to the vessels. Therefore, there will be left atrial enlargement. Aortic or mitral valve disease, whenever there is mitral valve stenosis, the atria has to push the blood hard to push the blood to the ventricle. Restrictive cardiomyopathy, left ventricular failure, these are the causes of left atrial enlargement and they results in these P mitrale and biphasic P waves in V1. So, these are the causes of left atrial enlargement. Now, what if there is biatrial enlargement? If both of the atria are enlarged, in such case, you in some leads you will be able to see the peaked P wave that shows the right atrial enlargement and in V1 you will be able to appreciate the biphasic P wave with a smaller positive deflection and a huge negative deflection that indicates the left atrial enlargement. So, the ECG will show both characteristics, the both features will be present that indicates that is biatrial enlargement. Now, we will be practicing some ECGs. Now, if you look at this ECG, in this ECG there are clear cut tall peaked P waves. Now, we will solve this ECG by the 6 step method. Now, I have already discussed, if you have been following my video series, I have already discussed the general impression, calibration, rhythm interpretation, R wave progression, excess deviation, bundle branch blocks in detail in my previous videos. So, if you want to learn about these things, you can check out my playlist. The link of that playlist is given in the description below. Now, let's solve this ECG. Coming to the general impression, the general impression is that the ECG looks fast. Let's look at the calibration. The calibration should be two large boxes tall and one large box wide and it is the case. So, it is a standard calibration. The ECG is being printed out at 25 millimeter per second which is standard. 
Now let's go for rhythm interpretation. In the rhythm interpretation, we'll have to look at the number of large boxes present between the two QRS complexes and we have one, two, almost two large boxes between the two QRS complexes. So, uh, one large box is equal to 300, two large box is equal to 150. So, the heart rate is almost 150, 140 beats per minute. It is sinus tachycardia. So, that is the heart rate calculation. Now, let's go for the QRS assessment. In the QRS assessment, let's go for the R wave progression. In the R wave progression, if you look at the QRS complexes, they should be negative deflected in V1, V2 and they should be positively deflected in V5, V6. Now, they are negatively deflected in V1, V2, they are positively deflected in V5, V6, those R wave progression is good. Let's go for the excess deviation. In the excess deviation, we'll have to look for the lead 1 and lead AVF. In the normal axis, both, in both leads, the QRS complexes should be positively deflected. Now, they are positively deflected in lead 1, but if you look at the lead AVF, they are major, the mainly they are negatively deflected mainly the qrs complex is negatively deflected and when the qrs complex is negatively deflected in avf and it is positively deflected in lead one they are moving away from each other they are leaving each other and when the qrs complexes leave that is a left axis deviation so there is left axis deviation now let's go to the bundle branch blocks. In the bundle branch blocks, we'll have to look for the rabbit ears, the M wave in V1, V2. We don't have that. Let's look at V5, V6. We do not have that M wave, a rabbit ear wave. So there is no bundle branch block present in this ECG. Now let's look for hypertrophy. In hypertrophy, let's go for the atrial. Look at the lead 2, 3, the tall peaked P waves. And if you look at V1, in V1, you can appreciate the positive deflection the huge positive deflection and the huge positive deflection is followed by a small negative deflection so we also have the biphasic p wave in v1 now this is a classical presentation of right atrial enlargement now in the next video we'll be discussing about ventricular hypertrophy and after that we'll go to the last six step in detail we'll talk about ischemia now let's go for the rhythm interpretation in this ECG there is another finding that there this these blue dots are actually showing premature atrial complexes I have already talked about premature atrial complexes in a separate video now look at the premature atrial complexes as we discussed in that video that premature atrial complex will disturb the normal rhythm now look at how the rate was going normally and how these premature atrial complexes have disturbed the rhythm. These are also the premature atrial complexes, the blue dots showing premature atrial complexes. So the rhythm is going normally, normally, normally and all of a sudden a premature atrial complex appears and it disturbs the rate. It disturbs the rate. So this is a sinus tachycardia at the rate of 140 beats per minute with premature atrial complexes and a left axis deviation with right atrial enlargement. So that is the proper interpretation of ECG in which you have not missed out a single point. That is the beauty of six second method. That's what you should master to interpret ECG. Now what you should do is that you should pause the video and try to solve this ECG yourself. Take a piece of paper, take a pen and try to solve this ECG. Make wrong answers but at least attempt this ECG till the time you don't practice ECG. What you should do is that whenever you see any ECG in the world, what you should do is that you should try to solve each and everything by this six step method. You will master ECG very easily. Now let's solve this ECG. Let's look at the general impression. The general impression looks that there are no ugly rhythms and it, the general impression is good. Let's look at the calibration. We can The calibration marker has been cut off uh, but we'll put it as a standard because it is two large boxes tall and it may be one large box. So we can't say anything. So we are try just writing down standard. Let's look at the rhythm. The rhythm is a sinus rhythm because P waves are there although P waves are notched but the P waves are present and they are followed by the QRS complexes. So the P waves are there, QRS complexes are there. Let's calculate the rate. We have one, two, three, three large boxes between the two QRS complexes. So we have 300, 150, 100. Sinus rhythm at the rate of 100 beats per minute. Now coming to QRS assessment, in the QRS assessment, let's go for the R wave progression. In the R wave progression, let's look at the precordial leads, the main leads. Uh, v1 and v2, the QRS complex should be negatively deflected and it is negatively deflected. Let's look at v5, v6, the QRS complex should be positively deflected and it is positively deflected. 
so the r wave progression is good let's look at the axis the axis the normal axis is that the lead one and lead avf both the qrs complexes should be positively deflected and they are positively deflected the qrs complexes are positively deflected the axis is normal now let's look at the bundle branch blocks in the bundle branch blocks we'll have to look for the m wave in v1 v2 we have no m wave in v1 v2 in v5 v6 let's look for the m wave so we have the notching the m wave is there now if you have seen my video on bundle branch blocks I, as i said that there might be a prominent m wave or otherwise you will see a notching of the qrs complex the notching of the qrs complex shows that the m waves are there even if you look over here the m wave the qrs complex are split into two so there is a bundle branch block and if you look at v1 and uh, v2 you will see the deep s wave the slurring of the s wave the slurring of the s wave this is the small r wave and after the r wave this is the slurring deep s wave that is the classical feature of left bundle branch block so the left bundle branch block is there now let's go for the hypertrophies in the atrial hypertrophy let's look at the p wave there is notching of the p wave the humped p wave look at the beautiful humped p wave that is a classical feature of left atrial enlargement let's look at v1 in the v1 we have the small positively deflection and a huge negative deflection negative deflection is bigger that is a classical feature of left atrial enlargement so there is left atrial enlargement let's uh, assess this rhythm the rhythm interpretation is that there is a sinus rhythm at the rates of 100 beat per minute with a left bundle branch block and with a left atrial enlargement so that is the proper six step method of assessment in which you did not miss out a single thing. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about the atrial hypertrophy, right atrial hypertrophy showing P pulmonale. How does it appear on ECG? ECG showing P pulmonale. Then we talked about lead V1 showing biphasic P wave causes of right atrial enlargement. Then we talked about left atrial hypertrophy. In the left atrial enlargement, we have P mitrelle. The P mitrelle appears as a biphasic P wave and bilateral enlargement will show features of both left and right atrial enlargement. The causes of left atrial enlargement. At the end, we solved some ECGs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy by six-step method. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.